Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we are starting a brand new lore series on the channel called The Last Tyrant, featuring Dong Zhuo. Even though Dong Zhuo has already made many appearances in our recent Fall of the Han lore series, I felt it definitely did not do him enough justice, so I wanted to make this lore series where we will cover his entire life from beginning to end in greater detail, as his role as the last tyrant of the Han Dynasty essentially set up over 400 years of chaos in China, where countless other warlords, tyrants, and power mongers would follow in his footsteps to seize power for themselves. So, as we kick off this lore series, we will be using three different lenses to look at Dong Zhuo. First and foremost, we will look at him historically, as we have done in all our lore series in the past, but we will also supplement this from stories from the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel and his portrayal in the game Total War Three Kingdom and other media sources to provide a more holistic view of this often caricatured character. So our story is going to begin around the year 138, even though Dong Zhuo's exact birth year is unknown. But it was around this time period that Dong Zhuo was born in the Inchuan Commandery in a small county slightly southeast of the capital of Luoyang, called Lunshi. His father, Dong Junya, comes from a big clan from the Lang province out west, but is currently far away from home as he works as a county sheriff in Lunshi. Dong Junya had a total of three sons, with our main character Dong Zhuo being the second son. Now, it's going to be a little confusing here as his older brother is also named Dong Zhuo as the second character in the name is pronounced exactly the same but is written differently using a different Chinese character. And the reason behind this is that his older brother did not survive to adulthood so their father ended up naming his second son or Dong Zhuo here with a similar sounding name. And not only did their father pick their given names, their father also broke tradition and picked out their style name for them as Dong Junya, named Dong Zhuo and his younger brother Dong Min, Zhong Ying and Shu Ying, which both have very literal meanings, as Zhong means second and Shu means third, while Ying is the same character as the name of Yin Chuan, which is the commandery where both of them were born in. So Dong Zhuo's style name literally means the second son born in Yin Chuan, while Dong Min's style name means the third son born in Yin Chuan. But despite their birth in Yin Chuan, their father was fast approaching retirement age. So once Dong Junya finished his post as the county sheriff, he moved his entire family back to their clan's ancestral land within the Liang province in a western commandery called Longxi. And it was here where Dong Zhuo actually grew up. Now because the Dong clan was a big clan in this region, Dong Zhuo grew up with a basic education, so he was able to read and write, but the scholarly education didn't interest him much, as he loved to spend his time out riding horses, hunting, and hanging out with the western Qiang tribes near his home. In this period, around the year 140 to 150, the Western Qiang tribes were still largely peaceful as the major threat to the Han Empire was still the Xiongnu tribes to the north and some minor Eastern Qiang tribes that worked closely with the Xiongnu tribes. So Dong Zhuo was able to enjoy his teenage years hanging out with the Western Qiang tribes. Once Dong Zhuo finally reached adulthood, his family gave him a plot of land to farm. But Dong Zhuo hated farming, and one day, when his Qiang tribal friends came to visit him, he generously slaughtered his only ox to prepare a feast for his childhood friends. And touched by his generosity, his tribal friends will return in a few days with thousands of livestock to thanks Dong Zhuo. And this event made Dong Zhuo quite famous and rich within town, and even landed him a small government job as the local administrator thought his relationships with the Qiang tribe would prove useful one day. And sure enough, not soon after, a Xiongnu invasion from the north would threaten the entire Liang province, and Dong Zhuo was able to rally his western Qiang tribal friends to his aid 
as he protected the Longxi commandery from Xiongnu attacks. And this caught the eye of Duan Zhong, who was the Qiang lieutenant at the time, as he recommended to the imperial court to promote Dong Zhuo to a military role. So in the year 166, Dong Zhuo officially joins the Han army as a lieutenant working under General Zhang Huan, who at this time is stationed on the northern frontier as he was responsible for holding back Xiongnu, Wuheng, and Xianbei tribes in the north. Now, even though Dong Zhuo really admired and looked up to Zhang Huan, Zhang Huan didn't actually return the favor, as Zhang Huan came from a background of Confucian scholars and didn't like Dong Zhuo's brash and crude behaviors. But regardless, Dong Zhuo proved to be a capable commander on the battlefield, and in the following year in 167, when the Western Qiang incursion would occur, Zhang Huan would actually send Dong Zhuo back to his hometown to help crush the rebellion, as he was most suited for the job. And following Dong Zhuo's success there, Zhang Huan fairly reported Dong Zhuo's deeds to the imperial court, and Dong Zhuo was rewarded with 300,000 meters of silk. Now, one good thing about Dong Zhuo was that he was a very generous man. So much like how he slaughtered his only ox to treat his Qiang tribal friends years ago, he passed on this 300,000 meter of silk as a reward to his entire troops and split them among his men, and they loved him for it. But as Zhang Huan went back to the capital to take on the role of finance minister, and the party incident raged on in the capital, Dong Zhuo found himself bouncing from one government post to another, as he first became a county sheriff, much like his father, in Yemen, before being promoted to the captain of the guards in the northern part of the Shu region, only to finally move to a general role out west in the western territories. But due to an unrecorded mistake, he lost his generalship out west and had to sit idly at home for a few years before Yuan Wei, who is Yuan Shao's uncle and the Grand Excellency at the time, somehow picked him out to become first the prefect of the Bing province, which includes the area of Shuofang and Xihe, which is where we find Dong Zhuo at the beginning of the Mandate of Heaven DLC. Now, the prefect is a government role similar to a governor in terms of rank, but with only supervision roles and no real power or military command. Eventually, Dong Zhuo will work his way to become He Dong's administrator around the start of the Yellow Turban Rebellion in 184. Even though administrators are technically one level below the prefect position and actually reported to prefects, administrators had real power as they controlled all civil and military matters within their commanderies. So in theory, this demotion that Dong Zhuo seeked out was in fact a promotion in terms of his power. And this takes us right into the Yellow Turban portion of the story, which we have already covered in episode 10 of our Fall of the Han lore series. But as a quick recap for those of you joining us for the first time, or if you have forgotten about what was covered, at this time, in the start of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, the imperial court appointed Lu Zhi as the general in the north, as he was tasked with sailing across the Yellow River from the capital to strike at Zhang Zhao's forces head on. And after a few early battles, the imperial army beat back Zhang Zhao's main force and forced them into a defensive position in a large town called Guangzong. Here, Lu Zhi would lay siege to the town for many months as he prepared for a final assault, building siege towers and digging trenches. Unfortunately, an imperial audit led by a eunuch named Zuo Feng would come to camp in June of 184, and he would ask Lu Zhi for a bribe. Lu Zhi refuses, and Zuo Feng returns to the capital and falsely tells the emperor that Lu Zhi has been stalling and doing a poor job on the front line. So the emperor strips Lu Zhi of his command and appoints Dong Zhuo, who is nearby, just due east, in the commandery of He Dong, to take over Lu Zhi's command and resume assault against Zhang Jiao's forces. Not wanting to make the same mistake as Lu Zhi, Dong Zhuo immediately launches an all-out assault on the town of Guangzong, but is beaten back by Zhang Jiao's forces, as Lu Zhi was correct in his analysis that the Han forces needed more time to prepare for this final siege. Dong Zhuo's defeat at Guangzong is also where he makes his first appearance in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel, as a rout followed the failed siege, 
and it was recorded at the end of chapter one, where Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei would bump into Dong Zhuo's routing forces and rescue him from Zhang Jiao's pursuit, only to be ridiculed by the arrogant Dong Zhuo because the three brothers were still civilians without any rank. Now, this story from the Romance of the Three Kingdom is entirely fictional, as Liu Bei's initial participation in the war against Yellow Turban were largely regional, so he never met or saved Dong Zhuo's life. Also, Dong Zhuo's failed siege at Guangzong didn't end with a rout and a pursuit by Zhang Jiao's forces, as Zhang Jiao remained largely defensive. And what actually happened is that with this early defeat, Dong Zhuo, who was eager to save face, abandoned the siege entirely and marched his entire force farther north to attack the weaker Yellow Turban forces near Anping, led by Zhang Bao. But unfortunately, his attack here would stall out for over two months with no real progress. And at this point, Dong Zhuo was also stripped of his command by the imperial court and recalled back to the capital, where he was given a trial for his incapabilities on the battlefield. And at the trial, he was given the sentence of Jian Si Zui Yi Deng, which translates to one tier below the death sentence, or aka exile. So with Dong Zhuo rotting away in prison, awaiting his exile, Come back next time as we continue Dong Zhuo's story with episode 2 of The Last Tyrant titled Chaos is a Ladder. See you then. Bye!